Hello and welcome to the season finale of, it's not the season, it's episode 13, which would be a season finale. And this is Stories with Steve and I am Steven. With me today are two of the funniest women I know. And I truly mean that. I'm going to go in alphabetical order and say first hello to Miley, who's right next to me. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Steve? I'm good. And below Hi. us, but never below us, is Melissa. Hello, Melissa. Hi, Steve. Hi, Miley. Hi, Melissa. How's it going? Oh, fantastic. All right. <laughs> um, People seem to really enjoy me not being out in the world. <laughs> oh, sorry. I might as well say that, right? Oh, shoot. No, you're fine. You're trapped. We're all trapped, but we're together. So normally what happens on Stories with Steve is I tell a story, you tell a story, you tell a story. But I thought it'd be fun if we changed it up. So I made this bowl of story topics just to Ooh. see what will happen. Exciting. Exciting. And if, look, you can say, it's like a game show. You can be a pass if you don't want to answer a question. Okay. So we'll go alphabetically and just have some fun and see what comes of this. We're just telling stories. We're just being present. We're just being funny and, or not, or emotional. Feel free to, um, you know. Cry. Cry. Have a breakdown. I don't know if I have any emotions left. I've been eating them. <laughs> no, no one stand up. There's that. Yeah. You only right. get us from here on up from now. All right, Miley, you're alphabetical. So you reach your hand in and pick one. Well, that's good. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. And I'm really happy you picked it. And we're going to start with you. Biggest family secret that is no longer a secret. Biggest family secret that is no well, secret anymore. My you leader. guys know this, but my father was a spy. So he, true story. True story. Yep. And um, so I grew up in Bangkok and Nuremberg and Germany, and he um, would, <clears throat> as spies do, disappear in the middle of the night and just not come back for a while. And, you know, as kids, we would try and guess where he was. In Thailand, he was mostly in Vietnam. Um, and uh, he um, worked for Department of Defense, and he was uh, in counterintelligence, so that's double agents. So, um, yeah. And he did it also during the Cold War in Germany when we went, when we went to high school. Um, so, you know, you'd see stuff in the news about like a family escaping. I don't know if you remember. Melissa, you might be, I don't know. I'm too young. I'm You're probably too young. Too young. But no, you really might have been too young because I was, you know, I was kind of young, but whatever. But there was a family that escaped from Ber East Berlin in a hot air balloon. And I think it was with a family friend too. And um, this is a true story. And I think Disney, somebody made a movie about it. Anyway, it was like, what the hell? And that night we were living in Munich and my dad, I always remember the sound of his pants being lifted off the chair with I think his wallet and some change and some keys in it. And it, yeah, I remember that jingly sound because it was like, uh oh, because the phone would ring there'd be no conversation that we could hear, and then he'd be gone. And so when that family um, went over the border in the, in the hot air balloon, my dad had to go up there and debrief the family to make sure that they weren't East German spies. So that's a good story. That's a great story. Amazing. Amazing. And by the way, I really hope that Disney did do a movie about that because the soundtrack can you just imagine like Kristen Bell like singing about the balloon family? <laughs> like floating, floating <laughs> over water. It's and loosely, it's loosely like based it. on what up is about. Loosely. <laughs> yeah, loosely it. based. And I like that even though your dad was like a double agent spy, he's still like the rest of us. He's not when he's not at work, he doesn't wear his pants. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the dad on the Goldbergs. Yeah. Just uh -oh. like, oh, oh, time to go to work, pants I on. I love Melissa, it. What, what's a secret in your family that's no longer a secret? Um, well, I have nothing as cool as that, for sure. Um, 
my dad got a perm once, but that wasn't as cool as a spy. Oh, I um, think it's pretty cool. It was that was kind of a secret, sort of that he got perms. Um, but let's see. Oh, this one's not as uh, as earth shattering as saving a family from you know war torn countries. But <laughs> um, this was kind of a secret. Um, I, my mother and my parents did not know that I had a tattoo until I was a mother myself. Like I had grown up, I got it like when I was in my early twenties. Um, it's not a tramp stamp, it's higher, so it's classy. Um, sure, sure it is. Sure. <laughs> but I remember uh, that when I got, you know who outed me was my own child. <laughs> really? Yes, we were in Minnesota and um, we, the, the, Riley was maybe four or five, maybe six, I don't know, and he could speak, which always was dangerous when they could <laughs> speak. Especially in your um, house. I know. There's so much to tell. And they come home from like a little play date and my mom goes, so, well, Riley told us something about you that we didn't know. And I'm oh. thinking, click, 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 click. Oh my gosh, there's so many things. Um, oh no, 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 no. That Chardonnay is prescribed. Um, <laughs> and uh, she says, he says you have a tattoo. And I had to, I fessed up. I finally was like, oh my gosh, I'm a mother. I've been voting. I can drive. <laughs> I Why, am I so too? Why am I so afraid to tell him? So I finally um, told my parents, I said, yes, I do indeed have a tattoo. Um, and they took it pretty well. Cause at that point I'd given them the greatest gift of all, which was a grandchild. So right. that was my takeaway from that is I could tell any secret after I'd given them a grandchild or anything I'd done because they didn't care anymore. Right. So happy. And yeah. since then I've gotten, um, oh, three other tattoos. So Can we see any of them. Um, yeah, well, I'm wearing my purple rain. So I do have, everyone knows I have, um, my prince. Nice. nice. Um, and then I have, when baby daddy got to hundred episodes, we all got the, the little safety pin. Oh, oh that's cute. right. With the A in the name. And then I have a tiny one here in the back of my neck that's a little tulip that's hard to see. So they're all like pretty, you know, I can hide them if I need to, but yeah. So that was- You're not Dolly Parton. I, I mean, right. Wait, did she have tattoos? Apparently she has tattoos. The reason why she always wears long sleeve stuff is she has tattoos all over her body. What if it's just the lyrics to Jolene and she's got like a sleeve? <laughs> that would be amazing. So there's mine. Uh, not a super big secret, but um, you know, it was, a, it was one where I got outed by my child. I, uh, Lisa and I got tattoos for our 10th anniversary. Small ones on our back, a little Celtic heart kind of thing. And I, we were at, I was visiting my parents on the Cape and we were at another friend's pool and my mother who had a big Boston accent, so did my dad, was like, oh Lord, is that a tattoo? <laughs> like just, oh Lord, is that a tattoo? Just horrified. Um, I, I will tell you one little secret about my family, which is, and it's a fun one, is that my dad's first cousin who, Uncle Sam married Aunt Faye, so Uncle Sam's daughter from his first marriage, was an actress named, I believe, Sandra Gould. And she was Mrs. She Kravitz on Bewitched. About the balloon family. No, no, she was Mrs. Kravitz on Bewitched. Oh, really? Yeah. Amazing. That's cool, She's right? Funny. That's a fun one. All right, Melissa, Melissa, pick yeah. away. Go ahead. Oh, mm -hmm. your hand's kind of hairy. Okay. I know, I'm quarantine. Okay, this is fun. We'll start with you, Melissa. What I wanted to be when I grew up. Mm. Oh, gosh. Um, well, I had a bunch of ideas. Uh, I always had a list. It was like, I wanted to be a lawyer, a teacher, um, uh, actress for a brief period, a Dallas cowboy cheerleader. Okay. Sure. Um, and then before I got too tall, when I was, you know, maybe like 10, a jockey. <laughs> wow. You would have been the worst jockey. I would have been the worst <laughs> jockey. The horse would be like, your leg's a dragon. <laughs> How tall is she? Um, is that a mini horse she's on? <laughs> I don't even, I'm six feet tall. So my jockey dreams were dashed um, quite early on. Um, a rocket. Mm, um, I can see that. 
but uh, but I was also told I was too tall for that by uh, my dance teacher Diane Farrell because I was in dance class and she was a rocket and she was super glamorous and just like this dyed black hair and you know she we kind of knew she'd be in the bathroom like smoking right before the class like <laughs> all right time to stretch and she was so beautiful and amazing and she said she told me I don't know how maybe I was 12 13 and she said Melissa I'm sorry you're not going to be able to be a rocket because I had to be older because I was I had hit my height. But 5'10, and this may or may not be true, but 5'10 was supposed to be the tallest rockette in the middle. So she's 5'10, and then everyone oh. was um. And I was like just hitting 5'10. And she's like, but there's always Vegas. Um, <laughs> so I that was my dance dreams. But you know, I think I, I thought I still think that if the um, you know, if the shit hits a fan, which who knows, maybe it is. I always liked kids and working with kids. And I think teachers are pretty incredible. And my dad used to always joke that a lawyer was the same thing as an actor in a way that you just get up and tell a story and hopefully people believe you. Um, but yeah, those were my my big giant uh, dreams. And Dallas Cowboy Cheerleader, I still harbor a tiny bit of hope. Well, they always do like the old lady ones, you know. Oh, the old lady ones? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. You can do that. Okay. All right. I'll I'll take wow. it. Wow, Miley. Um, what well, because I think it's funny. My friend was a Sparks dancer, and they call them like the Spray. singers or something, like the the, the dance, the, the Sparkettes or something. Oh, the Spark. Uh -huh. But there's like the old Sparkettes or something. Yeah. And I was like, my friend Diane is like, she teaches like Brazilian dance. She's like 42, and they're like, here come the old Sparks. Like they make them look sound like they're 70 yeah. and in fact there are a whole bunch of women that are amazing dancers that are in their 40s you know yeah. well I've, I've met the Dal I've met several members of the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders since then on the singing bee and like Nashville squares they brought them in and they were kind enough to let me dance with them for like a hot minute and so I guess uh the moral is dreams do come true sure oh that's good Miley what did you what was on your list um <clears throat> President, um, <clears throat> I'm a big political person. I firmly believed I would go into government or the State Department and of course a spy. And I still, I was a poli-sci major and I never thought I was gonna be an actress. That was completely by accident. Um, I went through spy, the application, I went to um, Fort Meade in first, Maryland. The first question on the spy application. What is the application, exactly. I don't, you, you had to do an essay and I think I found it years ago and I was like, oh my God, I, I sound like it's so fake. It's like, you know, how much of a patriot I was. And they had to interview all my friends from school, from college and like, they oh. had to be, you know, and they were like, you know, have you ever had drugs? You ever seen or tried drugs? They're like, no. I wouldn't, I would be, I wouldn't even make it past the application. They wouldn't even let me fill out the application. Well, then they brought me in to do this diagnostic testing where they teach you uh, fake language and you have to kind of answer questions based on the fake language that they teach you. And so I passed that and um, then um, I was all set to go. I was just waiting for my assignment and um, they were going to send me to, to language school and, and I had high language ability um, in uh, Monterey. So I was just waiting for an opening for the, to be a spy. And I was sleeping in my sister's fold out chair in Georgetown and um, doing comedy at night. And, and I reformed my college comedy troupe and I was like, nah, I'm not going to be a spy anymore. So funny. Yeah, my dad was going to kill me. Was that you'd be the most the most hilarious spy ever? You yeah, hadn't met my father. I like your trapper keeper and your trench coat, and then <laughs> if I could split the screen, I would send you a picture of my father in his Russian hat and his what are they called those trench coats? Um, for my college graduation, that's what he gave me, like a long. What are they called those coats? Yeah, I don't know, like a trench coat. Like, but yeah, yeah, but there's a certain name for them. But it was like Inspector Gadget, and there's yeah. a yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go on. All right, Steve, what about you? I, I wanted to be a veterinarian, and I still do, but I get freaked out at blood, so I don't I, think that's going to go well, right? 
Every person who wanted to be a veterinarian and isn't says that exact same thing. Yeah. And I think I wanted to be, I think everybody wanted to be a teacher because everybody had a teacher. You know what I mean? That's what we went to all day. So I think I wanted to be a teacher too. I didn't because my mom was my third grade teacher. No way. <laughs> she was? Yeah, I was awful. <laughs> Were you homeschooled or you went to school? I went to school and she happened to be my third grade teacher. So she'd sit all the bad kids next to me. Like, Wait, you know, the naughty boy. This is the secret you should have told. How did they let that happen? Well, we were overseas, so they didn't have a lot of teachers. So. Oh, there's not a lot of choice. Okay, I guess. Yeah. All right. But my... she knew I, I could handle the bad boys. Like, you know, jab them in the ribs, and she wouldn't say anything, so. <laughs> Reach in, Miley. <laughs> Where are you reaching? <laughs> Where? Go high this time. <laughs> Okay, oh, this is a fun one. Favorite relative growing up, not immediate family member. Favorite relative growing up, not immediate family member. And I'm gonna go at first and say a relative I'm not related to, and that's Grandma Bev. Oh. I love, I love Melissa's Grandma Bev from afar. I cry like a baby when you put up her, the videos. Yeah. I had a, I had a, She's amazing. I had an Aunt Ruthie. That was my real favorite. But oh my God, the, the Grandma Bev and with the Mark Harmon photo. Yeah. I, I, I watched it a hundred times. Whatever well, many views you have, a hundred of them are mine. I sob. Okay, Miley, your, your favorite relative. Well, we were a long way away, but um, there, we had these two aunts that we'd see. I was born in Hawaii. My parents had a house in Hawaii for a long time, but they just rented it out for like 20 years. But we would go back and see, they lived there when they were young, newlyweds. And, and we'd go back and see my aunts. <laughs> when I did stand up years ago, I would do kind of a closing number on part of this. I can't remember it now, but it was like my aunt Maggie and Maureen, right? They lived together and they lived on, at Diamond Head, you know, like on Diamond Head in a house and they had Cocker Spaniels and they would come because they were also something weird was up with them but they would come visit us sometimes in bangkok but so then so then i this is the kicker i asked my mom if they were gay she's like no they're not gay this is a long time ago and i but here's what i want to add up end it with they were both roommates both fully retired colonels from the army <laughs> No, no, they were okay. We called them Auntie Maggie Maureen, m and I'm like, Why Mom, is that here. not a sitcom? <laughs> right? They're not gay. And we would have, Maggie would come over and she was, she'd have a bag full of little nips of vodka because she'd take them from planes or on planes. And so she'd sit down sometimes with us. My parents had booze, but she'd sit and have her, she'd take her nip and pour it out. And, and then she also would bring us we beg her to bring us, sometimes she would mail us placemats from McDonald's and we would just pick it up and be like, mmm, McDonald's. Because <laughs> we were in Bangkok. It smelled like grease. Yeah, we loved the smell of it. Because sure. to me, the United States was Bangkok and shopping malls and movies and my grandparents and Maggie and Maureen. I cannot believe there's not a show about two sisters retired army colonels that live in hawaii that i mean that's a show right there like you know Who's aloha at ease i mean i don't know what it is like mm -hmm. and then at night they solve crimes local <laughs> local murders just seem to happen around all right melissa who's your favorite relative I think this is a theme and I think this is often true that it's ants, you know, ants are like the bonus moms that you can tell stuff that you don't tell your moms to. And I had aunt Susie and aunt Kathy, who I'm still very tight with, and they were the ants and they lived together in a really cool apartment that had a pool. And my sister and I would spend, we'd have sleepovers there. My aunt Kathy had a waterbed. Oh. Um, and that was cool. And we would go there and have sleepovers and we would eat licorice for dinner and we would drink tab 
Oh. We, would, we would take this, we would chew the licorice to make straws and drink tab. Yeah. I got to watch Saturday, uh, Saturday Night Live with them, which I was not allowed to watch. Um, my aunt Kathy introduced me to Steve Martin. She'd play the album and oh, then yeah. I would recreate for her boyfriends when they come over. I'd put a towel over my head and I would re I would lip sync to King Tut. King Tut, how <laughs> did you get so funky, funky tut? You know, and I would completely do King Tut as like an eight-year-old. Uh, and I couldn't listen to all the tracks on the album. She'd like fast forward them, but um, which then I, of course, I own that album now. But she introduced, like, it was like, I got to watch, uh, you know, I saw Gilda Radner with them. Like, it was all the stuff that I didn't get to do at home, which was, you know, sleep on my Aunt Kathy's waterbed, drinking tab. Um, and in my head, I was like, they were the most glamorous, so cool. Like, someday I'm going to have an apartment and I'm just going to drink tab and eat liquid. My waterbed. And have a waterbed and watch TV till midnight. It's crazy. And look, it's um, happened. It's happened. It happened. Right you do have a water bed. They really prepared me for um, a pandemic, which was <laughs> just right. a lot of comedy, a lot of licorice. And um, now it's not tab, but it's a little hard, stronger. But yeah, I think ants, if, you have, if, you're, if you're lucky enough to have uh, ants in your life, they're sort of the bonus ones. And they yeah. let you do whatever you want. Pick away, Melissa. Oh, you don't look at my upper arms. Yeah. They're really good. Cool. Upper arms. It look good. Oh, this is a fun one. So you get to go first, Melissa. Okay. First celebrity crush. Ooh. Oh, um, they were two that were in the same sort of like time period. Um, I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark and I, Harrison Ford, I was like, I love you, love you so very much and I don't know why. And it was like, you're just those bubbling feelings. So he was very, I just remember watching that movie and being just absolutely in, enamored with him. And then at the same time, he was more the movie one because I didn't get to see him like every day. But uh, the one that was in my house every week was uh, Bo Luke, John oh, yeah. Schneider. Oh. From, yeah, Luke, no, it was, he was Bo Luke. Yeah, he wasn't Luke Duke. Bo Duke, Bo Duke. and Luke Duke. Bo Duke. Cause he's Luke, yeah. Um, but it was John Schneider. And I remember just having those feelings that I couldn't quite comprehend of like, I really want to like, I want, um, you know, Bo Duke to like tuck me in to bed, but I don't want him to be related to me. And I, <laughs> like, it was like those feelings of, I would like to, to like hug me, but not be like someone I know. It was like, I couldn't quite re figure out it was a crush. And then, so I had I had the Dukes of Hazard uh, lunchbox. I had the poster, and then cut to I'm shooting a series for CMT Working Class, and they were casting like my ex husband, and it was I got to like put it in sort of ideas, and it was John Schneider who was so lovely and came and showed up, and I got to it was so weird because the whole time I'm thinking oh my gosh I had a poster of you this is so odd, and I got to. Um, uh, kiss my childhood crush and oh my god and that after we did the taping i brought out my dukes of hazard t-shirt that i'd had since i was probably like 13 I, I i so embarrassed myself i like put it on and made him take pictures with me <laughs> um so i was professional during the whole taping but um and he was so kind and lovely but it was one of those odd feelings of i thought about you in very you know teenage ways and then i had to be professional be like oh great job you hit your mark um but uh yeah it was i love the duke boys i absolutely and he is he was just the most beautiful man to me miley crush oh your, wow your celebrity That's hard to, crush. it's hard to top um i was completely repressed as a child i will say <laughs> not exposed to a lot of television or movies but i knew when I was in high school, and I was a late bloomer as far as coming out goes, but I saw Tootsie and I was like, Jessica Lang. Yeah. Oh my God. I completely understood him falling in love with her. And later on, I kind of realized I was probably in love with her too. Um, but here's a good one with the Hollywood twist. Um, so we didn't have a lot of movies, but I remember Blue Lagoon came out and we were one of the first people to buy from the PX uh, VCR, I think. For some reason, one of the movies we owned was Blue Lagoon. 
And um, so I saw that movie like a dozen times and I was like a sophomore or something. And I don't know who I was more attracted to, Brooke Shields or Christopher Atkins, but probably Christopher Atkins. But the twist of the story is years later, I met and partied with Brooke a couple of times with my buddy Wanda, which was amazing because Brooke Shields, when Hang on a second. Young, was I'm like, going to go pick up that name you just dropped. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wanda Sykes, for anyone who wouldn't know, that's her friend Wanda. Yeah, yes, amazing. Yeah, a legendary comedian. So go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Um, but I live in Christopher Atkins' old house. <laughs> so, now? so, yeah. Now, right now, that's where I am right here. Right now. Where did you bury his body? <laughs> I didn't, but so we would occasionally get mail from him. Other people had lived here in between, a few people. And my old next door neighbor who since passed was like, oh, I loved Chris and he married a Playboy bunny and they were the best neighbors ever. I bet. So, yeah, so but the house, when we moved in, I'm sure the other people before us didn't change anything because there were three sets of pink vertical blinds, pink shag carpet in our bedroom. I mean, it was really, and this is, we bought the house like, you know, whatever, 2001. So we occasionally get mail, well, from him, I would. And um, not like junk mail mostly. One time as an invite, to, a couple invites to like functions. And, but you one time- You should have gone. Huh? You should have gone. <laughs> yeah. One time I get this package and it's his, um, it's from his brother. It's his bathing suit from Blue Lagoon. <laughs> it's Christmas. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a big gift for his, him and his family. Why did you deliver it here? We'd already been in the house for like five years. So I tracked his brother down in Connecticut. And I said, this may sound weird, but I live in his old house. Can you send your brother to come get his Christmas gift? Because <laughs> I wanted to meet him. <laughs> And so he came and picked up his Christmas gift. He's like, thanks so much, because I knew you wouldn't have time to send it all the way back to Connecticut. And then I wouldn't have time to get it. This is like on the 23rd. So, yeah. I don't know where he lives. That's amazing. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. He looked very sunburned. Me? He did. Uh, oh. Yeah. Kind of shrivelly sunburned. Well, that's a lot Sunbeam. of sun damage when you live on an island for how long? Yeah. Um, we're going to go, we're going to change things up, and we're going to go to the lightning round. Okay. This is the lightning round. What, what's the prize? <laughs> we get to leave our home someday. Oh, God. Okay. No, we, okay. The lightning round is this. Things my mom says. Melissa, go. Did you call your grandma? Miley, go. Lord, love a duck. Steve, go. You gotta be kidding me. Melissa, go. Oh, for crying out loud. Miley, go. Yeah, but for the grace of God, go I. <laughs> Steve, go. I didn't touch anything. Melissa, go. Uh, why don't you pick up your phone? <laughs> Miley, go. Um. How's Lisa? <laughs> Stop. That was pretty good. All right, we got time, I think, for one, maybe one, maybe two more. Miley, your choice. Is this lightning round? No, this is regular. Okay. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Best family vacation. Melissa, go. <laughs> oh. Easy. Um, it was we. It was totally the Griswolds. We loaded up in a station wagon and we drove to Disney World, and it was amazing. I and mean, it was those days where my dad like put a mattress in the back of the station wagon, and we slept there, no seat belts, just rattling around. And um, we went. We I don't know how many stops we made on the way, but we got to Disney World, and we had like it was the most magical trip ever. I mean, a lot of you know. I think mishaps just like any family that's in a station wagon across the country. But I, I just love that trip. And we have, I have pictures in my Mickey Mouse shirt on the way home and yeah. And my sister left her blanket in one of the hotels, her big giant blanket. That was her favorite one. And we had to turn around and get it. Um, yeah. Disney world station wagon cross country. It's amazing. That Minnesota, accent, that Minnesota accent is coming out when you say station wagon. 
Yeah, okay. it really was coming out. Miley, favorite family vacation? <clears throat> oh boy, there are a lot, but um, I'll think of one. We went to Singapore and Penang once for vacation and um, we went on this little island where they sewed us outfits. I wish I had pictures made out of um, rice sacks or flower sacks. And it was like, it was like a tropical island. It was very, not very well known. You'd had to swim to shore from the boat to get your food where you, they'd have fresh crabs they plucked out of the ocean and Coke bottles and you'd crack your crab with the Coke bottles. The dog would have to swim in too, the dog was with us. And then we went to Singapore the same trip and my dad got me and my brother that were younger and my sisters went off with my mother to go shopping. And um, he took us to see, he wanted to see a movie because we never saw movies. And of course they speak English in Singapore. So he took us to see Cabaret and my mother was <laughs> going to kill him when we got back. How old She's are like, you? I was like 10. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just remember how furious. And that made me and my brother just ecstatic. We were just overjoyed. Yeah. Our favorite, our, my favorite vacation we ever took, and we, we, got, we left out, we got to go one time to Disneyland. And we were from New Jersey and we were like lower middle class family. But my dad drove us to Indiana, no, um, Tennessee maybe or Kentucky. We went to, I think it's called um, Kutchner's Caverns or Kutchner's Caverns. So you go in this like little shack and you're like, what the hell? Like my dad talked this thing up. Me and my brother and sister like, and my mom are like, what are you talking about? You go down these metal stairs and then you keep going and going. And it's one of those underground caverns with the staglomites and the pectomites and the triblomites. I didn't, you know, whatever. But it was, and you walk through this whole thing, but it was like walking into Narnia or the Wizard of Oz or, it was insane. And it was like the greatest thing because it like just started in this weirdo little shack. And, um, and then we went back and then he was gonna take us to another one, but we begged him for it. Like, please, please, please take us to that one again. Cause we like, we didn't believe the next one would be as good as that. We yeah. didn't want the disappointment. So we did that one a second day in a row, and then he took us to the next one, which was not as good as the first one. <laughs> but I'll never forget it was cool. So listen, I thank you both so much for being here and for story time with me and just playing along. So um, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys because we have a few minutes left here. Miley, do you have any words of love that you wanna send out to the universe, to everybody out there watching, and by everybody out there watching, I mean my mother? <laughs> <laughs> I love your mom. Yeah. Yeah, I, got, I got a big audience. I'm almost at a hundred views. All right. Uh, no, I think just hang in there, you know, just uh, try and be patient. I think patience is going to be the thing that we're all going to have to really wrap our heads around in, in many, many ways. Um, where can people see you next? Uh, where can they? Well, I don't know. I started a pilot uh and then we were supposed to start on monday we did our on camera tests and everything so i'm hoping 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 it comes back it's called work wife and it's executive produced by uh kelly ripa and ryan seacrest yay. and i have a great great part on the show so yay yeah. fingers crossed it you know it will it will everyone's gonna need some good funny and it'll happen it might just take a little bit longer but yeah it's super funny Melissa, what words do you have for everybody? Um, you know, I was just sort of saying like, you know, we're all so physically distant from each other, but I don't think, I also think that gives us opportunity to connect in different ways. So my thing was just sort of like finding other ways to make little connections, whether it's you're spending a little more time um, talking on the phone with your relatives. I've been writing letters, like real snail mail, especially to like people that I know that are singles and alone like just to get mail that's a funny card um so yeah just as much as we're uh we all really are in this together and even though we can't physically touch we are very much connected and i think that's sort of what's keeping me going is that there's this whole you know worldwide in a way and certainly in you know um uh, our country that we're all we really are we're all experiencing the same things yeah. for the first time at the same time which whether it's anxiety um sleeplessness f the good moments whatever i sort of think that just enjoying those little connections you can find so that's it that's good where are we going to see you next in my kitchen 
uh, I've been starring there daily. Like With that yellow months. stove that I covet, that yellow stove. That yellow stove is amazing. Um, I, think I, I think I have one last episode of Young Sheldon for the season that's airing, which it's been so funny because I had to do a line. We had to uh, fit in a line during this where I couldn't go into the studio to finish a little line. So I've been in my closet like on and off the last couple of days trying to get one Brenda Sparks line for him. Um, <laughs> But uh, hopefully, you know, they're, they're, they actually, I think, ended up, um, their season was maybe one episode short, but I have one more episode coming up on Young Sheldon. And I had a few things like you, Miley, like that were sort of bubbling. And then uh, who knows? I didn't, I didn't book a pilot. I tested for one right before, but I don't think I got it. Um, but at least I can say, uh, I don't know if I got it because I was bad or there was a pandemic. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which is sort of, you know, nice. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I really feel that as much as our, these healthcare and we find out who is essential, which is our, the guys that take your garbage out, do your mail, buy, check out your groceries, how essential they are. Um, I think there will be a need in another great way for artists and creative people. So I'm, I'm feeling optimistic about what will happen after this for everyone who puts a little laughter, joy, music, that into the world. So Fingers I think so. I think so too. And I'm not bragging here. Yesterday they came to get our garbage. Uh, we have we have the brown, the green, and the blue. And I gave all the guys twenty bucks. And some of them didn't want to take it. And I'm like, take the fucking money here. Oh, Just take it. Because do it. These guys are getting out there, and God knows what they're touching and not touching. And yep. You know that's what to do. But that's what we're trying to do here. This is what the stories with Steve. This is why I started it. This literally started with an idea at like 10:52 in the morning. I texted two friends, Mary and Christina, and said, "What are you guys doing in eight minutes? You want to come tell stories with me?" They both. Christina was still looking for a story, and hilariously, um, I'm not so good with the technical side. So apparently, I didn't hit the record button. Oh my god! Oh. So we rec we recorded it the, about an hour later. And they were so, it was really funny because I was like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, nothing. I'm like, want to record with me? I go, yes. So that's what this is. This is just telling stories, having fun. And I thank you for joining with Stories with Steve. More stories with Steve to come. If you want to be on Stories with Steve and tell a story with me, hit me up at steve at prettytheseries.com. Ladies, I love you. Thank love you. Thank you. you. See you soon. Be safe. Be well, everyone. Bye. Bye.